Hi students, welcome to Study Smart Channel. Today we are going to study Form 1, Chapter 1, Part 3. Let's start. Let's start with what's in it for me. What's in it for you in this video that it's important for you to watch until the end? First of all, we will study about the accuracy and consistency. We will study how to identify a measuring instrument that is accurate and also that is consistent. Next, we will study about vanier caliper and how to actually read the reading from the mean scale and the vanier scale. Other than that, we also study about micrometer screw gauge. How to read the micrometer screw gauge, what is timber and what is the vanier scale reading. Apart from that, we will study about zero error for both the vanier scale and also micrometer screw gauge. Last but not least, we will study about density and compare the density of a tightly packed gold ball with a loosely packed tennis ball. Our first topic today is about accuracy and consistency. Do you know what does it mean being accurate and being consistent? Well, accuracy referring to the measuring instrument obtain value closest to the actual value. Let's say the actual value is 5 cm and your measuring instrument is obtaining value closest to the 5 cm which is around 4.9 cm, 5.1 cm. It means that your measuring instrument is being accurate. Consistency referring to the measuring instrument obtain same reading with repeated measurements. So, every time you use the same measuring instrument, if the reading that you are getting is same, let's say you are getting 4.9 cm for repeated measurements, it means that your measuring instrument is being consistent. Let's see some example on accuracy and consistency. Okay, the first example over here is showing that we have few readings accumulated at one side but those readings are not hitting the bull's eye. So which means that these readings are being consistent but it's not accurate. It's being consistent because every time you get the reading, the reading is fall on the same place. The second example over here, it shows that your reading is being accurate but it's not consistent. It's accurate because it's always eating near the bull's eye. But it's not consistent because it's eating few other places at every time you do the measurement. The third one over here is showing that your reading is not being accurate and also not being consistent. And lastly, we have a reading that is perfect which is your reading is being consistent and also accurate. So this shows that your measuring instrument, every time you do the measurement, it's giving the same reading but at the same time, the same reading is actually closest to the actual value. That is why your measuring instrument is being accurate and consistent. Now, let's understand about measuring instrument with higher accuracy. We have vernier caliper over here. Vernier caliper can measure the thickness, outer diameter, inner diameter and depth of an object with the smallest division 0.01 cm or 0.1 mm. There are two parts of vernier scale which is the first one is main scale and the second one is vernier scale. When we take the measurement of the vernier caliper, we need to add the both the main scale and also vernier scale together to get the final reading. Now, let's see an example on how to read a vernier caliper. We have two scale over here, namely the main scale and also vernier scale. The main scale contribute to the main number and one decimal place to the reading. The vernier scale contribute to the second decimal place of the reading. So, let's see the example over here. We will just use a two-step method to get the measurement reading from this. To obtain the main scale reading, look at the image. 2.1 cm is to the immediate left of the zero on the vernier scale. Hence, the main scale reading will be 2.1 cm. In order to obtain the vernier scale reading, look at the image and look closely for an alignment of the scale lines of the main scale and vernier scale. In the image given, the aligned line correspond to 3 and the vernier scale reading will be 0.03. So in order to obtain the final measurement reading, we will add the main scale reading and vernier scale reading together. So this will give 2.13 cm. 
The second measuring instrument we have is micrometer screw gauge. The function of this instrument is to measure thickness and diameter of small objects such as paper. This micrometer screw gauge is more accurate than any caliper due to the more decimal places in its reading. The reading method is similar to any caliper. You have the main scale and vernier scale readings. First, get the reading of the main scale which is nearest reading to the immediate left to the timber. So over here, the reading nearest to the timber is 3.5 mm. To obtain the second part of the measurement, look for the number on the rotating vernier scale that aligns with the line on the main scale. And 0.38 mm is the second part of the measurement. In order to obtain the final measurement reading, we will add the main scale and the vernier scale reading. So the final reading of the micrometer screw gauge will be 3.88 mm. If the zero marking on the vernier scale aligns with the scale line, the micrometer has no zero error. But if the zero marking on the vernier scale is below the scale line, the micrometer is said to have a positive zero error. And if the zero marking on this vernier scale is above the scale line, the micrometer is said to have a negative zero error. So if your micrometer has a zero error, your final reading should be the reading of the micrometer screw gauge minus with the zero error. That's when you will get the actual reading. As for a vernier caliper, if the zero on the vernier scale is to the right of the main scale, then the error is said to be positive zero error. If the zero on the vernier scale is the left to the main scale, then the error is said to be negative zero error. Your negative zero error will be written with the symbol of negative in front. And just like micrometer screw gauge, your final reading of the vernier scale should minus the zero error. Now, moving on to density. What is density? Density is the mass per unit volume of a material. It is referring to how tightly packed the matters in a specific space. So, let's take the an example of a golf ball and tennis ball. You can see that inside the golf ball, it, the matters are tightly packed. There is no space left inside a golf ball. But in a tennis ball, the most of the space in the tennis ball is filled with air inside. So this shows that the density of a golf ball is much higher than the density of a tennis ball. The equation for density will be mass divided by the volume of a matter. Alright students, with this we have came to the end of chapter 1. We have completed part 1, part 2 and part 3. That's all from me. Until we meet again in our next video, thank you and have a nice day. Bye!